Hello, third graders. We're going to be reviewing what you did in class uh, when it came to talking about data. So we're looking at organizing and analyzing data. So data is just a collection of information. And there are different ways to, or to collect that data. Uh, usually when we are collecting data, we have categories that they're grouped into. For example, we have this right here. These are different snacks and these are the categories, popcorn, crackers, trail mix, cheese, vegetables, fruit. Before we start that though, we're gonna, well, this kind of goes along with categories because this is guess my rule. So there's a secret rule and some of the people will fit in my rule and some don't. So if we look at this picture down here, these people on the left fit my rule. These people on the right do not fit my rule. Can you guess what the rule is? Look carefully at what the people are wearing. That's a hint. Carefully at what they're wearing. Look at their arms. Yes, that's right. These ones have short sleeves. So the rule is students wearing short sleeves. I challenge you to come up with your own rule. So when we were in class, we talked about different observ or we may we organized our data that we had collected. So this is just some data that went with another group. And it said, where's the place where you would like to live? And it said home someplace in the country, someplace out of the country. And can you tell anything about the places where people would like to live? Yeah, a lot fewer would like to live out of the country. Now, what about places that people like to read? What can you, what, uh, what do you notice? Where do people like to read the most? looks like in bed. And then the other ones are pretty similar. Now, both of these were kind, were easier to understand. This is a little bit harder to understand just by glancing at it. Where do people like to visit? I think this is Massachusetts, the US, other places everywhere. And we can tell where the place that fewest people would like to visit everywhere. It's funny because these places are in everywhere. Now, what about this one? Places you like to visit. Is this easy to understand if, or is this easier to understand? Our graphs are a way to help us organize information that make it easier for us to understand what the data is telling us. So a bar graph is a graph that uses height or length of rectangles to compare data. A scale is a series of numbers at regular intervals that help label a graph. Scale is right here on a bar graph. This is what we're talking about on a bar graph. Interval is the distance between two points, for example, here, or if we're thinking of uh, two to four, the interval is two, because it's two away from two, four is two away from two. So now if we think about some data um, in class, if we had if we had seven students that were wearing red and four students who were not wearing red, how could we show this on a bar graph? So we first would want to have a scale. We want to know what we're going to count by. We could count by ones. Counting by ones would be OK. But I want to do a scaled bar graph because scaled means it's going to count by more than one. So I'm going to go with two because this isn't very much data. So if I go zero, oh man, if I go zero, two, four, six, eight. That's as high as I need to go because the highest number was seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
I didn't leave myself very much space here to uh, write. So I added a label on the scale, number of students. I also added a label here for the categories, red and not red. I also added a label here to say what the categories were talking about, the color they were wearing. So now I need to actually draw my bars. Notice when I made my scale, I started at zero on the line here, and then at the next line, it's two, four, six, eight. So I can draw my bar up to the line. So I'm gonna go with not red first, and I'm gonna go up to four, because that is how many they were wearing. Now, there were seven students wearing red. Seven isn't on my scale. But if I think about it, where does seven come when I'm counting? Does it come between six and seven? Halfway between six and seven, right? So I'm just going to go halfway, and then I'm going to draw my bar down. Oh, man. And fill it in. So now I have my information for red on here. I'm still missing one thing, and that is the title. Because what is this talking about? It's talking about students wearing red. Where are they at in our class? So students wearing, I just put R4 because it was in our class. That's my classroom. So what does this bar show us? It shows us the number of students wearing red. What does this one show us? The number of students not wearing red. These numbers show us how many students, and this is the label for that. And these categories tell us who's wearing, who, what these, bars are for and this label tells us more about that so i know what it's talking about when it says red and not red now let's look at another example of a bar graph so i want us to think what information does this graph show well first look at the title what does this show it's talking about how do you get to school Now let's look carefully at all the information. We've got a key here because look at our bars. There are two bars and they're different colors. So it looks like we've got one school in black and one school in red. Also down here, I've got a label. I've got categories, walk, bicycle, car, bus. So it's how they get to school. So it's either walk, bicycle, car, bus. And I think this says types of transportation that slide that keeps coming up. Type of transportation, yep. Then these numbers, whoa, these numbers are 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay, and those are talking about the number of students, and I know that by looking at the label. So what does this first black bar show us? It's talking about Lincoln School and how many kids, students walk, and it goes right to that 40 line. So 40 students walk to school to get to Lincoln School. How many students from Parks School walk to school? Well, I'd have to look at the red bar because Parks is red. And I want to look at walk still, so I'd see where the walk bar goes to, the bar on walk, the red one and it goes to 180. So it's 180 students walk to school at Parks School. I can also then compare that information. How many more students from Parks School walk to school than from Lincoln School? So 180 and 40, how much more is 180 than 40? I can do a couple things to figure that out. I could 
count from here and count on. Like I've got 20, and these are by 20s, right? So I could count by 20s and go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. I could also do 180 minus 40, and that is 140. So I get 140 students either way. Now again, notice these numbers are going up by 20. The scale is counting by 20s. That means it's using intervals of 20. Why do you think they used intervals of 20 instead of counting by 1s or even 5s? Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to make a graph where I had to have, I would have had to count all the way to 180 on the side. That would be a very big piece of paper. It would be very small numbers written over and over. That's a lot of work. So this makes it easier for me to see where the information is and I can put it on a smaller graph without and see without having to have all those numbers. Five would also be very difficult to read as well. So 20, I think, is a good number because we see that there are some that are at 20 as well. In our graph that we made before, it's erased now, I'm sure. Oh, no, it's not. In our graph we made before, what is the interval that we used? 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. What are we counting by? Yeah, we're counting by twos. Why do you think I chose to count by twos? Well, I thought that if it was counting by twos, then I wouldn't have to make my graph as tall. And I'm not sure I would have had space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would have just barely had space and then I would have had to write some of this other stuff off the paper. But with twos, I can easily see all the information right here. What about how many, what does this black bar show us here? That's above bicycle. It's showing us, is it showing us about Lincoln School or Park School? Yeah, it's about Lincoln School. And it looks like about, I'm going across so I can see, 60 students ride their bicycles to school. What about Park School? Is it more or less? Well, Park School is red and the red bar is taller than the black bar. Bar, so it's more and it looks like it's 100 students so how many more students from park school ride their bicycles to school than students from Lincoln school well again we could do it the same way we did before we could count up by 20s 20 40 or we could do 100 minus 60, and that equals 40. What about this bus one? What does that tell us about Parks School? This black bar is Lincoln, but I don't see any red. So does anyone ride the bus to Park School? No, they must not have a bus. So remember, scaled bar graphs usually have a scale on the side and they're counting by a certain interval, the same interval all the way up. It has a label on the scale, it has categories, it has a label on the categories, and it has a title. Sometimes if it's a double scaled bar graph like this one is, it might have a key over here too to tell you about the bars. I hope this gives you a better understanding or a review of bar graphs and organizing your data.